This is Liz Bakes for you, and I'm buying an apple pie. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to an episode of But Make It Donuts. Um, I just got my receipt. It is nighttime, and I'm in a drive thru to get a McDonald's apple pie. Um, we considered, obviously, that we'd need to try the apple pie before I attempted making it into a donut. And when I suggested we go get it during the day, like a normal person, I was told that that is not what a normal person would do. A normal person would go late at night and get a McDonald's apple pie. So by our standards, it's pretty late at night. This place is popping and I've been waiting like 15 minutes for a dollar 48 apple pie. <laughs> But I have been thinking about it all day, so I think it's gonna be either really good or extremely disappointing. Nothing in between. Apple yes. Here you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Look at how many napkins they gave me. The six napkins, Adam. Well, don't be a mess. Six. Okay. Hmm, it smells really good. It has an enjoy by time of 9.43 p.m. Caution hot. Oh, it's so cute. This seems different. Does this seem different to you? Does this seem smaller? Does this seem smaller? Have my hands just gotten bigger since I've had it last? Okay, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do these cuts, but I might be able to do some sort of design on the top. I think I might wanna try like an old fashioned dough. Okay. Bigger apple pieces than I was expecting, but very gluey. I mean, honestly, it's pretty good. Much crunchier and flakier than I remember. Can you try bite? I've gotten two. Yeah. It's really good. Mm. I think I should do an old fashioned dough. Or maybe I shouldn't do a donut dough. Maybe I should just deep fry a pastry crust. I think that would be a disaster. I fried croissant dough before. Mm -hmm. Two mixed results. Sure. This is this is actually like very good. Like I said, it's either going to be awful or very good. I, It seems better than it used to be. But I definitely have a pretty good idea of where I want to start with this. Um, so let's get into the kitchen. We're ready. Proto's squeaking. You got things in your eye. The dishwasher's making more noise than it ever has. Ugh. Okay. Okay, so we got an apple pie the other night, which was good because... I was trying to think through my memory of apple pie from McDonald's and when we were driving up to get one, I had been thinking about it all day and I was very excited to get one, but I also was sure that it was going to be underwhelming based on my expectations. So whatever that perspective is, that was my impression of McDonald's apple pie is that I wanted them to be extremely good and I looked forward to eating them, but then I knew that I would be underwhelmed. But then I wasn't. Good. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Which brings me to my first point. The dough for this donut. Oh, also I kept this for proportions to make sure that I had it right. Um, so the dough. Um, this is probably super duper soft now. Um, oh my God, hold on. I spotted a very small Kingsley hair and even though we're the only people who eat all this stuff. We get enough Kingsley hair. We eat enough Kingsley hair. Ina Garten, in one of her many cookbooks, has a recipe for a French apple tart. And that tart has a crust. And that crust reminded me the most of the McDonald's apple pie crust. So that's what I made. And you'll see, I use like a European butter, so it's much more yellow. But you can see the big chunks and streaks of butter. This is, the way that this is done is you leave those big chunks. It creates what's known as a rough puff pastry. So you fold it and you get those layers of butter like you would in a rough puff 
except you don't have to do all of the annoying steps of puff pastry. So that's what we're using. And I need to roll it relatively thin. Um, and I've never deep fried something like this before. So I, I wish I could guess what would happen, but I, I, I don't know. On their little apple pie, they have slices on top, right? To let air out. Because if you're cooking a bunch of raw apples inside of something, they're releasing a bunch of steam. So you have to create a little opening for the steam to release or else it'll like pop a bubble in your crust wherever it feels like. So in order to hopefully avoid that, this looks kind of gross now, but these are cooled off cooked apples and they've got like that goopy kind of goopiness. Oh, that was a little aggressive. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready. I just got to The bad part about this is that it's very hard. So I didn't forget the rolling pin this time. I just forgot everything else. Okay. Now, ideally, I don't want to roll this out more than once. Or I want to get as many as I can out of it the first roll. So I want to try and keep it rectangular as best I can. Rocking the boat here. One thing to consider when this hits the fryer is butter has a water content to it, you know, like milk fat and the rest of it's like some sort of liquid. It's not fat, basically. Milk has like a fun enzyme in it that makes those two things just like coexist without separating. Um, but when that hits the fryer, it's going to make a crackly noise. And earlier today on Instagram, I was testing apple fritters, which seemed like a very good idea this morning, but inevitably has been way too much apple related testing today. So anyway, that's why I don't like apple fritters is because they make a really loud crackly poppy noise and I don't like it. I think this is pretty thin. What do you think about the thinness? I don't know what I'd be looking for, but it looks pretty thin. Man who doesn't bake thinks it looks thin. Hmm. Let's take our fill. Oh. All right. It didn't take up the entire box, but no. it came close. So I'm going to say four and a half inches by two inches is what I want this to be. I used to do this all the time for Pop-Tarts. So I cut out all the Pop-Tarts, but it was really, really, really obnoxious. Oh. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna wanna cut the ones that go over bigger, cause you know how it like goes up. Maybe I'll cut those two and a half inches, so I'll do See, how many more inches do I have to play with? Six, almost 12. Okay, so these are two and a half inch pieces. This is, maybe we can make a miniature one out of that. Mm, okay. um, I don't know how many apples we have, but let's see. That was not straight either. Looks like I can make eight. How about oh. that? Yeah, no wonder you wore my freaking apron. You deserve it, okay? My apron doesn't. You do the laundry, so this is your problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd be bummed out, Roman Mars. That doesn't look like enough to me, but I think it is. It looks like too much to you. It looks like too much to you? Okay, then we're at a happy medium. I think I didn't want to do this episode because I know precisely how I want these to turn out and I'm not confident that even with my current efforts they will turn out that way. Does that make sense? Like earlier today when I was doing apple fritters, I didn't really, I, they never seem to turn out good for me. So I was like, whatever, they're always bad anyway. But this, I'm like, okay, the actual 
the actual hand pie or whatever you want to call it apple pie there we go it was tasty Let's see how that looks on the bottom so now I'm obligated to make a good tasting one so I think I'm going to trim all of these Let me show you. but that seems pretty good right I might toss them in a little cinnamon sugar at the end because I think the one that I got had sugar on top of it. I can't quite remember though. Bleh. Oh God. My mom's trick on apple pies is to like squish the crust down on them. Oh no. You see the little boo? I wouldn't exactly say this is working. Oh, God. Oh, no. It came out both sides. Well, you know. They're finally all filled, so what I'm gonna do now is trim them a little bit and put them on a pan and actually pop them into the freezer for probably an hour um, because I want them to be very cold when they go into the fryer. And we're going to see if that solves whatever mystery problem I think I'm going to run into when I start frying them. Cool. One time I switched this to Celsius accidentally. Oh yeah? Yeah, and I was like, why? This looks like it's hot enough. And I was like, oh shit. It like basically burnt my oil. These are my little babies. Ah, okay. Um, I don't know if I should poke holes in them. So I'm gonna try one without poking a hole in it and then go from there. I also realize that this isn't really like making it donuts. I think I'm cheating a little bit. I'm just like deep frying apple pies. But it is my channel, so what do we think? Do I just get to do whatever I want? There's nothing. I don't know if they're going to float. In fact, they're probably not going to float. Well, nothing's exploded. Well, I thought I was being clever, but I basically backed my way into deep frying an apple pie. Like, how did I accidentally do that? Well, because when I tried it, you know, I bet these things are actually, you know, like the trope about McDonald's apple pies is that they're like little lava inside. Mm -hmm. These are probably actually lava inside. Yeah, we'll see. Those like might be more messed up. Because they had a little leakage happening. Ooh, these ones are rising, huh? Oh. Baby. Oh. These look cute. They don't have the pattern that the uh the um McDonald's ones had. You know, like the slices. Mm -hmm. Oh, the tinies are fine. You can see like where the sugar leaked out, like it gets darker because sugar burns. So if you're ever having a cake that browns too quickly, just cover it because it's just the sugar kind of browning quickly. I'm gonna bring them over to the table. I think that's pretty good. So here's my theory. At McDonald's, they're scoring these to open it up to the inside filling to release that steam. I didn't do that because I was deep frying them and I didn't want to open up a like gushing flood of oil into the insides of these. So my theory is to toss them in sugar. But then I thought one step further, which was when they basically when they go to bake these, they must like 
I don't know what they're actually using, but effectively they're doing like an egg wash with sugar on top of it. And it caramelizes in the oven. So I have this, which I'm only now realizing probably looks extremely embarrassing to anyone who actually works with one of these in the kitchen. This isn't what they normally look like. Hold on, how do I work this? This is how I s'mores things. Uh, but yeah, I realized after the fact when I saw other people in their kitchens that they have these cute little tiny guys. I don't know where they get those. Actually, a really big problem with this was when I was making so many donuts all the time and I was doing a lot of s'mores ones, you have to hold it here, right? And you, so this is pretty, this is like not super heavy, but it's like three pounds. So basically like at the end of rolling out dough and flipping things, I would just be holding this up at like an arm extension for like 25 minutes and I have a lump. Yep. And that contributed to it for sure. So I don't really want to cover the whole thing. I just want to get it a little bit on the top. And again, this is just a theory. Can you come in close for this? caramelized for sure. Do we try one? Is it time to try one? This one will be for a photo okay. and I will be putting it back in the McDonald's box for the photo. <laughs> As I stated before, I did the thing where I thought I was walking into a whole new idea, but instead I walked into something that people have been doing for a very long time, which is I deep fried an apple pie and I'm sure that's been done before. However, this is a donut channel, so it's a donut. <laughs> right. A nice crunch. Mm -hmm. This probably isn't gonna be good. It's too goopy looking. It looks it looks like very goopy. Maybe it's, maybe it's good, who knows. Mm. Honestly, if you baked these, it's just like, you see how wobbly that is? Like, here. The texture of the apple is very good. The filling is similar. But the problem with using a rough puff and a deep fryer, it, it just didn't get the crunch yeah. like that you'd want it to, um, which I think might come from maybe like a longer frying time. But then you'd have like full on oil saturation. So who knows? Not the best idea. However, I'm very proud, <laughs> very proud of this. Okay. Oh, what do we think like this? Probably. we 148. There are 17 napkins in there for you. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for an episode of But Make It Donuts, where I but made it deep fried apple pie instead of donuts. Um, there's really no knowing how one gets from what they think is a good idea to an idea that isn't at all what they were shooting for. But somehow I did that today and I hope that you enjoyed watching it. Uh, my favorite part personally was putting my pie into the McDonald's pie box and it and it fit and it looked really cute. Um, but overall, this was a fun experiment. I've never deep fried a rough puff pastry before, so check. I don't know where that's going to go on my resume. Somewhere. Maybe in special skills. <laughs> Has deep fried accomplishments. <laughs> accomplishments. Um, I will say the, the apple filling in this is extremely good. 
Um, so I'll include the recipes for you. Uh, if you want to attempt this, you can. I have a couple of good ideas lined up for the next couple of episodes, but I'm always open to new ones, so drop those in the comments if you have them. Be sure to like and subscribe, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next week for, what do you think? One of the peak episodes of Orlandoing? Uh, but make it, I'm gonna make a donut. I'm really gonna make a donut next week, guys. So we'll see you there. I don't know where this McDonald's is. It's literally on the left side of the road. I don't know where McDonald's is. I don't, I can't remember. The last time I went to a McDonald's was... Like, you don't see the dragon on the on our trip, on, on our road trip. No. I, I, like, don't even remember there's, like, an ABC here. I forgot that Walmart was there for a really long time, too. No salt on their french fries. This order ahead of us. Ooh, what is wrong with you? A hot fudge sundae? The McFlurry, they beat the McFlurry with the thing that became your spoon. When I was really little, you do know the fact that I had uh, like a very particular diet. Like I didn't, I was very, very picky and I didn't think I liked anything, including hamburgers. Um, so after preschool, my mom would, I would make me lunch and it would either be cheese balls and a hot dog or she'd stop at McDonald's to get me a Happy Meal. So I had like... I think like a hundred Happy Meals a year for most of my childhood. Wow. At least the first like formative three, three to five. And then when the Beanie Babies came out, we'd go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and buy like four Happy Meals at each one just to collect all of them. And she definitely still has like maybe four gallon sized bags in her closet full of still wrapped mini Beanie Babies from that mm -hmm. time period. Cause we collected a lot of them.